What is it you're looking for? That's a great question. What is it that you are looking for? That's the question that Jesus asked his brand new disciples when they come to see him for the first time. What is it that you are looking for? Welcome to St Ninian's Church in Stonehouse. We're really glad that you could join us from wherever you find yourself today. My name's Stuart and I get to be the minister here. You can find out all about our work and what we do on our website at saint-ninians-stonehouse.org.uk. But now, let's begin our worship time together. Reading for us and leading us in prayer today is Alan and our preacher this morning is Leslie Thompson, a student who's on placement with us as she finishes her ministry training. The first reading is from Isaiah 49, and it's verses 1 to 7. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From a mother's womb, he has spoken my name. He hath he made my mouth like a sharpened sword, and the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow, and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant, Israel in whom I will display my splendour. But I said, I have laboured in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself. For I am honoured in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who despised and abhorred by the nation, to servant of the rulers. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Reading from John 1, verses 29 to 42. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptising with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day John was there again, with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. Come and see the curiosity of a seeker. Come and see the invitation of one smitten. Come and see the catalyst that set in motion a whole world of adventure and intrigue, of excitement and trepidation, of unanticipated joy and heart-wrenching sorrow. Come and see. To follow a summons and recruit others 
to venture out with us, come and see. Our reading from the Gospel of John this morning is full of revelations. and just 14 verses, we are provided with John the Baptist explaining to his followers just exactly how he knows that Jesus is the Messiah, God's chosen one. It then moves on to John recommending to his followers that they should now go and follow Jesus. And of course, this is where we hear those famous words, Lamb of God. Now so well known to Christians across the world as Agnes Day, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. These first few verses fulfil the purpose and the role given to John the Baptist by God. It's now complete. But this is not the end of the revelations. In the final six verses, we are made aware of the first two followers of Jesus and the first question asked of them by Jesus. What do you want? Taken in different ways, this question can come across actually as quite sharp. It's quite a response to give, but I guess they were two strangers. These four small words that say so much. What do you want? Who are you? Why are you following me? What are you looking for? All the W questions. And in one word, they advise what it is that they are actually looking for. Rabbi. Rabbi or teacher. By using this one single phrase, we are alerted to the fact that these two disciples of John, well, they want to learn from Jesus. They have seen and understood that John the Baptist has pronounced or indeed ordained Jesus by testifying that this is the person, this is the one who is to come after and surpass himself. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's chosen one. So they go with Jesus to where he is staying and they spend the day with him. Imagine if you can, a face-to-face, one-to-one meeting with Jesus. Then we see that recommendation thing, well, it happens all over again. Andrew, who's just spent the last few hours with Jesus, He immediately goes to find his brother Simon and he tells him all about the time that he has spent with Jesus, the Messiah. Andrew must have been really convincing in what he was saying and how he was reporting to his brother as Simon goes with him right away to meet Jesus. And what a meeting that turns out to be. Simon must have made quite the impression after looking at him. Jesus notes, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. Now we all know that Simon from now on in is known as Peter. And the Latin translation of Cephas is Petrus. And in Aramaic, Cephas means rock. And it was used a lot for naming boys. So in just 14 verses, John has testified about Jesus, he sends two of his own disciples to follow Jesus, and then Jesus renames the third one to join them, from Simon to be now known as Peter. John's Gospel strips away most of the details about John the Baptist's life, those details that we have found out before from the other synoptic Gospels. There's nothing here about his parents, his birth, or his naming, even his mother's relationship with Mary, the mother of Jesus. We don't find out what he wore or what he ate. We don't hear about his call to repentance or even his actual baptising of Jesus. And all this seems to actually allow us to concentrate on John's utter dedication to his task of testifying to Jesus. In this gospel, perhaps it would be more fitting for us to call him John the Witness. 
I mean, if we haven't met someone before and are being introduced to them for the first time through another acquaintance or a friend, then the only understanding we have of what this person and what they're like will be the testimony or the opinion of whoever is telling us about them. Even now, when we're trying to figure out anything about people who have come before us, like those from the Bible, the only references we have are from the testimony of others. Sometimes we're lucky and we have alternative opinions across different references that allow us to provide a fuller picture of the person concerned. But in the end, we are always faced with this one question. Do we trust what we've been told? The whole of John's Gospel is a testimony. It's inviting us readers to believe it in order to trust who Jesus is, as far as John is concerned. But not to just believe, but to follow, to speak to others about this Jesus, the Messiah. John provides the testimony with his naming of Jesus as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. But we're then witness to the gathering of the community of followers, followers who wish to learn and witness the life and work of Jesus the Christ. Thomas Brodie notes that this passage in particular, well, it transforms the self-giving of sacrifice into the self-giving of total teaching. This learning and understanding, it's not something that happens all at once. It will involve progress and growth. And what we have been told about the la- those last couple of days through chapter one of John's Gospel, it exemplifies this. There is a deepening and broadening during this time. And indeed, the rest of John's Gospel continues with this teaching. Throughout the Gospel of John, there's a key term which is mentioned here in chapter one and verse 38. Now we hear it in some translations as, what do you want? But for me personally, I prefer, what are you looking for? The whole looking for section, it can cover so many meanings, including to seek and to search, to try and attempt, to strive for, to want or desire or ask or demand, to require or expect, to deliberate, to examine or investigate. These are all held within the heart of progressing and learning. And in John's Gospel, they are used as the first words spoken by Jesus. What are you looking for? These first words, they underline the learning that is essential to discipleship. This is a community of inquiry, searching and reflection. It's a community of abundant life and love. It's a community whose desires are stimulated, educated and fulfilled in the relationship with Jesus and whose minds and imaginations are stretched through being questioned, called and taught by Jesus. And like us, the disciples have much to learn and they will get things wrong. Their faith and understanding and trust in Jesus, it needs to grow and mature. And their imaginations and horizons, they will be enriched and expanded by the works Jesus does, by the encounters they have, by the teachings he gives, and above all, by his crucifixion and resurrection. The disciples took the first steps into this life when they came and saw where Jesus was staying, and they remained with him that day. The rest of John's Gospel can be seen as a journey into learning, learning what that remaining and abiding and dwelling and enduring, well, what that actually means. So for us as disciples of Christ today, we need to remember that we don't know everything. This is a journey of discovery, a journey of learning and of reflection. We have the benefit of the knowledge of those who have gone before us, the teachings that we can learn from scriptures and the understanding that we have each other to travel with in our own community of abundant life and love. It's impossible to learn and grow 
without first stumbling and falling. And it's in the picking ourselves up, of dusting ourselves down, and learning from our mistakes that we truly grow. Personally, I know that my journey has already changed me. It's changed who I am. But it's in nowhere near finished. There's so much more to learn. So many other people to walk alongside. So many other people to grow with. To discover the beauty of God's earth with. To uncover the teachings of Jesus with. To sense the work of the Spirit guiding us with. So let me ask you this. What are you looking for? We lift our voices to the Lord Most High With joyful singing we will glorify The great Creator, the author of all life We are His people and He is our God He always guides us in His ways with love Let joyful praises come fill this place in song God, we gather as your beloved children, grateful for your love. 
Thank you for sacred places where we can find you, worship you and feel at home. Our hearts go out to our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate, who need to meet in secret places and who are in danger just because they want to worship you. May they find you anywhere they can and know that you are with them always. Thank you for loving us so much you sent Jesus to help us find you. We long for the world to meet you in Jesus, that they too may feel at home in your love. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who travels with us always and guides us home when we get lost. Our world needs to follow your Spirit and return to you, so that the world will become a place people are glad to call home. Thank you for the Bible, for stories that help us know you more and understand who we are and whom we serve. May your word be available in many forms for everyone to see, read and listen to. Thank you for sharing our humanity, for teaching us that your love is eternal, that our home is with you, and that no matter how often we get lost, you patiently wait for us to return. Our hearts are with all who are lost to you, all who are seeking to return, and all have yet to discover you. Thank you for families of all shapes and sizes, for people who build community and work hard at building relationships with others. Our hearts break for your children who are abandoned or abused, for all who have not been part of a loving family and who long to be welcomed home. May they come to know your love and find a place to call home with a new family who love them just as they are. May we continue to find our home in you, following the way of Jesus and walk in our world, sharing your love for everyone, building your kingdom here and now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we continue in the words you have taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go now with your questions, your doubts, your expectations. Go searching. Searching for fulfilment, for truth, for love and for justice. But go with the blessing of God. God Almighty who is each of these things. And who goes with us. And the person of Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit. Dwelling in each of our hearts. Always. Food Bank opens for collection on Sunday from 1pm until 2.30pm and every Sunday thereafter. Uh, obviously it's been Christmas and New Year so stocks are low so any donations that you could bring to the Food Bank would be very gratefully appreciated. And don't forget if you or anyone you know needs food then they can come and collect food at the same time from 1pm until 2.30pm every Sunday at St Ninian's Church. Third Sunday Youth Club happens on the third Sunday of every month. It takes place from 7 till 8.30pm and it's open to anyone who is aged to be an S1 to S6. It's free, it's loads of fun and we'd love to see you there. <laughs>